So let's talk a little bit about histograms as well as kernel density plots. So what are they? Why are they useful? We'll start with a simple example. Supposing we've collected a sample of size 50 and recorded the ages for a bunch of individuals. So histograms as well as density plots can be used to help visualize the distribution of our sample and for a numeric um, or quantitative or continuous variable. So we're going to go through and do some of this stuff by hand. In reality, we won't ever do them by hand. We'll have a piece of software or a computer do them for us, but we're going to go through and do it by hand for the sake of discussion and, and exploring what exactly these plots are. The first thing we need to do is start by talking about a frequency table. What we can do is we can, well, we're going to want to look at the distribution for our variable age, and we can go through and create a bunch of bins or buckets or whatever we want to call them. So I'll look at 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, and so on. Then what we're going to do next is count how many people fall into each of these. So I guess one thing worth mentioning before we get into that, I've chosen these bins or categories to be 0 to 10, 10 to 20, and so on. Um, you or a computer might choose slightly different bins. So they might choose 0 to 15, 15 to 30, um, 30 to 45, and so on. Okay, so this is just a choice I've made here for the sake of discussion at the moment. So the next thing we can do is calculate the frequency or how many people fall into each of these different um, bins. So let's just suppose that we had five people falling in the 0 to 10, four falling in the 10 to 20, and I'll just fill in the rest. We can fill this to be the total, right? And in total, we've got 50 individuals. So the next thing we can do is convert these frequencies into either proportions or percentages. And so I'm going to go through and write the percentage, but it, it doesn't really matter. So this frequency of 5 ends up being 10%, and if you want to record as a proportion, it would be 0 0.10. This 4 is 8%, again our proportion of 0 0.08. 16% for a total of 100%. As we said, this keyword distribution, this shows the distribution for the variable age. Right, so again, how are people distributed amongst the different bins or categories that we've created? Now, a few things to mention. What do we do with observations that fall on the border? And what I mean by that is an age of 20. Does it go in this bin here or this bin here? doesn't really matter as long as you're consistent. So if you decide that an age of 20 is going to go to the 20 to 30 bin, okay, or the one above, then any ones that fall on the border should always go to the um, category above. Again, a software, when it does this, it'll have a default value. You can change that if you want. When doing it with a piece of software, it will choose the bins for you as well as the number. You can have it um, change and do more or less bins. You can modify those if you want. Usually, it's good to create somewhere between 5 to 10 bins it's worth noting that if we change the bins, this frequency distribution is going to change slightly. So let's talk a bit about how we can make a picture or a plot of this, right? Again, it's a bit, um, well, not complicated, but it's a bit messy to look at this. A visual is going to help us out a lot. The visual we can create is called a histogram. Essentially, what we're going to do is create a plot of this table. So along the x-axis goes the variable age. 0 to 10, 20, and then on the y-axis, we can either put the frequency or we can put the proportion or the percentage. Here I'm going to choose to put the frequency, but again, it doesn't matter. The plot will look the same. It's really about which one you prefer to put. Down here is 0 up to 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now we can see in the 0 to 10 bin, we have 5 people. So I'll shade that in here. In the 10 to 20, we have 4. 20 to 30, we've got 8. 30 to 40, we've got 10. Now again, another keyword. This here is a nice visual, right? Again, it shows us the distribution. How are people distributed um, for the variable age? And when doing this plot, um, each of the bars should be equal width. Okay, they are for the most part. Um, I studied statistics, not art. So maybe it's a little bit off here. You will notice that each of the bars are touching. 
right? And again, that's because age is this continuous measurement. There's no space between the um, categories or groupings where when making a bar chart, we left space between to indicate they're separate distinct categories. As mentioned before, if we were to change the bins, right, if we were to make them bigger, say zero to 20, 20 to 40 and so on, the shape of this might change slightly. And so it's important to note that. And it's important to note that this plot here helps us visualize a lot about the variable age, right? We can kind of see what's the center. So later we'll summarize those using things like means or medians, but we can see the center of the distribution looks somewhere around here. How spread out are things, right? Are age highly variable or is it pretty narrow? Again, we'll find ways to numerically um, summarize center and spread um, very soon. It also tells us the shape of the distribution. Does it look fairly symmetric or does it look a little bit skewed in one direction? These are all things we'll um, tighten up the wording and definitions on soon. And it's also worth mentioning another plot um, for summarizing a numeric variable, the distribution of a numeric variable, is a box plot, which is similar to a histogram, um, was similar in what it tries to show, but a different way of trying to summarize a numeric variable. Later, we're gonna kind of build on all these concepts just mentioned here. Another important related concept is the idea of a kernel density. Often, the word just density gets thrown around and the, the kernel gets left out of it. What a kernel density, without getting into the kind of mathematical and technical details of it, what it is, is it's sort of a smoothing out of this histogram here. And again, it's trying to get around the idea that I've mentioned, if we change the bin slightly, the shape of this is gonna change a little bit. Okay, so rather than bumping around so much, it tries to smooth this out. A way to think about it, um, without getting into the, the technical details of it, is it's sort of a smoothed out version of the histogram. Okay, so again, the histogram or the kernel density plot they help us summar, um, well, they're useful for helping us summarize the distribution of a sample for a numeric or continuous variable. And they give us a sort of estimate of what the probability distribution um, will look like. Okay, and again, probability distribution is another concept we're gonna build on and expand on in following videos. Hope you guys liked the video. Subscribe to our channel, cause we got lots more. Statistics is almost as beautiful as a unicorn.